Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dai Chronic Heroes here on this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be showing you the Destiny 2 reset for February 11, 2020. Everything that has reset from the Night Falls Menagerie to Eververse, everything major that has reset as well as the thing that's going to be happening this week, the very special event, the Crimson Days event. Basically your Valentine's Day event, 2v2 doubles kind of playlist in Crucible. Uh, where you have to stay near your teammate to get some bonuses and you have to uh, not go away from your teammate otherwise people can see through walls stuff like that and there's a whole bunch of different prizes so to start off the crimson days all you have to do is go over to Shax, and then of course from him you're going to be picking up an emblem now this is the same emblem that we've had in previous years so if you have it in your inventory you have to delete that and then of course get the new one so you can start the milestone for Shax. And he's going to have a bunch of different things, including weekly bounties, uh, daily bounties. Uh, they give you the currency called Confectionary Heart, which is going to be important for buying these different kinds of things for the event. Now, uh, most of these things are going to be the same as the ones we've seen before. Obviously, the ones with the Dawn symbol in the corner, these are going to be the ones that we are uh, that, that are definitely new. Uh, these two sparrows are pretty much exactly the same, just one side of the pair. Uh, and then, of course, you can buy some of these, which are going to give you enhancement cores, a bunch of different bonuses, pretty straightforward. Moving on to the regular weekly reset, let's go ahead and get started with the Nightfall Ordeal. This week, it will be Sabaton's Song, the big purple shriek at the end, dropping the duty-bound auto rifle, a decent strike for... Uh, points, but definitely in the lower half. As for the regular Nightfalls, we have Insight Terminus, which is going to be the big Scion at the very end, dropping the Long Goodbye Snipe Rifle, Inverted Spire, the big Minotaur at the end of the beta mission uh, from Destiny 2 Beta, and he drops the Trichomatica Exotic Ghost Shell, and then finally the Hollow Lair, the one that everyone's been looking forward to, uh, which is going to be the Fnatic at the end of a second mission that drops the Mindbender's Ambition Shotgun. A big note about Mindbender's Ambition, it's not worth your time. Technically, if you can get a good roll with it, which it has great rolls, it will be slightly better than the Imperial Decree, but you can get the Imperial Decree with so much more consistency, so much faster, and it's just not worth it to spend that much time. As far as high scoring Nightfalls, definitely going to be Hollowed Lair, and of course the fastest is going to be Inverted Spire. The Heroic Modifier for this week will be Void Cinch. Moving on to the weekly rotating Crucible playlist, taking a closer look at the Crimson Days and all that what. Now, before that, just wanted to give you an update here. We are at uh, number four out of seven, so the community has hit uh, step four out of seven and unlocking what seems to be the Trials of Osiris. Uh, as far as the rotating playlist, we have Momentum Control, a very popular playlist. I uh, highly recommend you play. It's kind of like SWAT from Halo 3. Everybody has low health. They get abilities for kills and... It's really crazy with some of the scout rifles and hand cannons. We also have Breakthrough, which is kind of like a kind of tug-of-war thing, but not very popular. And then finally, Crimson Days. Like I mentioned before, it is a 2v2 limited event, only available for this week until February 18th. You get a bunch of different bonuses for being near your teammate. You get disadvantages for being away from your teammate. Of course, you also can get those bounties that I mentioned at Shaxx. As far as Reckoning goes, this week it will be the Likeness of Oryx. If you're looking to get any of the weapons on the Likeness of Oryx section, which includes the spare rations if you still want that, it is available this week, and the modifier will be Solar Sin. The Flashpoint this week will take place on Titan, so completing the Public Events Lost Sectors and Heroic Adventures to finish this off quickly. As for Escalation Protocol, this week it will be the Sniper Rifle. That's because last week was the SMG, and next week will be all three. As for the Menagerie, this week it will be Hasapiko Beloved by Kallus, Big Min Minotaur with the shield walls, and the weekly for the normal mode will be Void Singe, the daily being Iron and Heavyweight, and of course the heroic version having Extinguish, Iron, Blackout, and Void Singe. As for the Nightmare Hunts this week, we have things like the Fnatic, Crota, and Fogoth. From my experience, Fogoth seems to be pretty easy, and I would recommend him, especially considering how many different locations you can hide from the boss during the boss encounter. As for the Garden of Salvation challenge this week, it will be to the top, which has you deposit 10 motes at a time whenever you deposit motes, and this will be during the Consecrated Mind encounter, which is going to be the encounter where you kill that harpy-like guy. This one is actually really not that difficult. Moving on to Eververse's inventory, showing you everything that she does have available, and it does in fact seem like she does have a lot of Crimson Days stuff available, which is something really nice to see. So let's go ahead and get started with the Bright Dust things. First of all, we have the Crimson Passion shader, which is actually a very nice shader and a highly I recommend you check it out if you don't have one. On my Titan, it looks very, very pink, but on a lot of the other classes, it looks a little bit different, and on the weapons, I think that it looks really, really nice. It's not like a pink, like, glow on the weapon. It looks like a light red, um, and I really like the way it finishes on weapons. Uh, ironically enough, the Izanagi is not supposed to be colored, but when you put a shader preview, it colors them. That's weird. Next up, you have the Graviton Lance ornament that we have seen in previous years uh, with this particular event that looks really, really nice, like a beautiful nebula. You got a ghost shell. You got the heart sign emote, which I believe was a silver only 
uh, purchased last year, which you can now get for Bright Dust if you want it. And of course, we have the other Bright Dust section that doesn't actually have a lot of repeats. That's actually really nice to see. First of all, we have the Spike Emote, which is uh, you have a football, you spike it to the ground, you have the Spur of the Moment, uh, which is going to be that uh, that Bull Cattle Tex Mechanica Sparrow that we saw last week. We have the Crimson Shell, Benji's favorite guiding light, that shell that looks really, really nice. We have the Ornament for the Helmless Saint 14, the Crimson uh, ornament we have the legs for my titan since i'm on my titan it doesn't matter it matters what class you're on and of course ghost projection with two hearts and a couple of other things across the bottom in case you cared and personally crimson valor used to be my favorite for a very long time which you know it's uh, it's an acquired taste and different characters have different things but uh on weapons i just it looks really nice <laughs> what are the chances i can call it out correctly three times in a row i will tell you right here right now if it doesn't end up being what I call out. You may not even see the result. And finally, we have Hawthorne's inventory, which strangely enough does not have those other bounties anymore. I don't know where the hell they went, why they're not appearing here. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the weekly raid challenges. Uh, first of all, we have the Last Wish raid, which is Strength of Memory. This is going to be taking place in the final boss encounter of Riven. Uh, and basically, you can't shoot the same eye twice. So if you notice that... Uh, oh, fudge. So you can't shoot the same eye twice, so if you notice that a certain eye is coming to you again, just switch it with somebody else, and you should be fine. Used to be that you could cheese this very easily with just doing the rocket strat, but uh, that's not very viable these days. As far as the Scourge of the Past raid goes, we have the Hold the Line, which is going to be the first encounter of the Scourge of the Past raid. Basically, you just have to do everything faster. You're going to have a battery level right next to the map. Just make sure it doesn't get to around halfway or near the red zone, and you should be fine. The Crown of Sorrows Challenge. Limited blessing also in the first encounter of the raid. In this particular encounter, only two people at a time can have the uh, the blessing. So just have two people trade it to two other people and back and forth between these the two different pairs of people, and you should get it. And that's going to be pretty much it. That's going to be the end of the weekly reset video. If you guys did enjoy, if any questions, tips, tricks, Sports concerns, training. If you like Jaguars, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, the last thing I want to mention is that I have a very special video that's going to be coming out tomorrow. I would highly request that you watch it because it's going to be very, very important to me. And you're going to hear a nice story. So anyways, I'll see you guys on tomorrow's video. And of course, on the next one.